Well, here at the Matchroom Gym with Mr. Connor Ben. Connor, I've not seen you yet, so I can say Happy New Year, and I would say Merry Christmas, but by looking at your social media, you were in here sparring, weren't you, on Christmas Day? Happy New Year to you too. Yeah, no, Matt, Christmas is Christmas, but, you know, work goes on, the show goes on, it's a lifestyle, man, so, yeah, still being Christmas festive spirits. Everyone always comes out with a bit of cliche, don't they, when, when the calendar turns over, New Year, New Me, but for you to have a, a fight so early on in 2024, what's the mindset for you heading into effectively what is a new season for Conor Ben? Nothing's changed, man. You know, no New Year's resolution. I made all that last year, um, you know, and I've, it wasn't even a, a resolution. It was just like, just me growing, changing, you know, uh, being strong and being the best fighter I can be and staying disciplined um, and working through the storm. So, you know, there's nothing that, that I'm going to change this year. It's still that same dog mentality. It's still that same, you know, that, that hard work, the you know, determination, sheer grit, um, and the desire and will to win. Uh, nothing changes. Second consecutive fight now across the pond. This time, Viva Las Vegas. Uh, excited, and I guess as a, a boxing fan that you are, why is this something that really appeals to Conor Ben? It's just, man, I never thought I'd fight in Vegas, let alone headline in Vegas. You know, so for me, it is is nothing but a blessing. Um, you know, I've got a lot of supporters in in America, and uh, I know a lot of people will be travelling to see me over there. So. Um, yeah, it's nothing short of a blessing, man. You know, I sit back and I count my blessings. Obviously, you know, this is my home. Um, London, England's my home. And I feel like I can't wait for the homecoming. Uh, but in the same time, I'm embracing every step of this journey. And, you know, this chapter this past year has made is, uh, well, a few chapters. So, you know, it's all, it's all part of the story. And, um, you know, I'm excited what, what's to come. Although, obviously, you, have to, you focus on your own business. Uh, with Pete Dobson, who will come on to talk about how nice is it that, that a lot of the team are going to be coming over as well with, with George Lillard and Jimmy Sainz also on the card. Must be a special moment for you too. Yeah, cool, mate. And the old Bosch army, <laughs> uh, you know, Johnny Fisher. So, yeah, it's exciting, man, to have all of us four Essex boys going to Vegas. Um, I don't think that's been done before. So, you know, yeah, it's nothing short of a blessing, man. And um, exciting for the, what the opportunities have presented itself throughout this process, you know, fighting in Orlando. You know, now fighting in in Sin City. You know, then I fought in New York when I first turned over. So it is nice to to get out and fight in the states and make my name more familiar over there um, and more of a household name. For the last God knows how long, you've been asked about one man, and that's Chris Eubank Jr. And when is this fight happening? It's not Chris Eubank Jr. next. In your own words, I guess why why is that the case? Um, I'm, I don't really get involved in negotiations. I leave that to my team. You know. This whole period, my team have allowed me to just stay disciplined and work in the gym and stay dedicated to the sport of boxing. And irrelevant of all the noise, you know, the multi-million pound fights, the, the fights that have fallen through. you got to remember there was Pacquiao, there was Kelbrook, there was, you know, Ennis, there was Eubank. So I just stay dedicated to what I do. And the money isn't the motivating factor for me. Winning is. I love winning. And, you know, for me, that's what's important. And, yeah, I mean, listen, if he, he didn't want to fight, he didn't want to fight. That's that. Like, you know, I ain't going to lose no sleep over it. You know, who, who's next then? That's it. That was all I kept saying. Who's next? And it's not the ideal opponent we all wanted. But a fight's a fight. We keep it moving. We keep growing. We keep learning. And we keep developing. You still believe one day we, we will see that fight? I don't, I'm, I don't, I ain't like at the forefront of my head, you know, I sidetracked for this fight, giving everything away, going up to 160, I sidetracked for this, I'm some state of course man, you know, and, and remind everyone why I'm one of the most dangerous fighters at 147. We well, do have an opponent, an undefeated opponent, for the purposes of this, just tell us who you're fighting and what you know about the man that's in front of you on February 3rd. Um, Peter Dobson. Um, he's an American, 16 and 0. He's. I, d I never watch my opponents. I leave that to my trainer and my coaches. I don't watch my opponents. I'm confident in anything I do anyway. Um, and my ability, Orozco never watched him. Um, I let my trainer, as I said, watch watch him. So I don't know much about his style, but I do know that I'm one hell of a fighter. I do know I'm extremely powerful, extremely determined, determined, and full of grit and sheer determination and, you know, a punch like a horse's kick. So, 
So, you know, good luck to him. Have you seen any of his comments, particularly in the press release, what he's had to say since this fight was made? No. What did he say? He said, you're not your dad, that he's going to ruin another matchroom hype job, etc., etc. Um, your response to that, I guess, does that add anything to the fire for you? Has he fought another match on fire? No. But he was, he was scheduled to fight Pat McCormack and he said similar things about Pat. There, there was other talks with, with other fighters, the likes of Kevin Ajarko, that never materialised, but I just wonder what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not my dad. Like, it's not. I mean, like, I'm not my dad. Like, clear to see. It's evident to see I'm not my dad, you know. So, um, I am Conor Ben. And, you know, that's where that comes down, that's that, I mean, like, well done, very smart of you, like, obviously I'm not my dad, um, but, yeah, ruin another match, I, I, there's nothing I ain't heard before, you know, there's, like, I've heard all this, um, so fair play to him, if he wants to talk that talk, talk that talk, um, you know, a lot of people said I ain't been ready for this, I ain't been ready for that, talk is cheap, I really take no notice of words, but when I get in the ring, I express every single bit of feeling, I have in me. I express every bit of my then cool, no problem. Is that what you think? Right, cool, I'll show you. You know, so he can keep talking that talk and it will um it'll do nothing but it'll do nothing but make me wanna end the fight sooner than it will. Uh, so that's completely fine with me. I ain't got no shit to talk. I ain't a shit talker. I say what I say and when I say something I mean it. Um, when I say I'm going in there to dismantle um, Peter Dawson, I'm going in there to, to remind everyone who's who and what's what. Um, and, and that's it. And I don't say that, you know, trying to sell the fight. I don't say that trying to play games. I don't say that for anything. I'm going to make him look like what he is. And I'm make him look, I'll make this fight look like the sort of fight it's supposed to be. And by that, could be early in your mind? I mean, I'm coming for it early. I'm coming for it early. When I see an opportunity, I take it. Just the way I am, you know. I I, I take the shots I see. I don't I don't pull back. I don't pull my punches. I don't pit a pat around. When I come in there, I go in there and I him out. That's period. That's my mentality. It's the way I am. It's just I can't help it. You know. So when I go in there and I see an opportunity, if I see one split second of a pain or one split second of of weakness, I look. I I make sure he knows that I've, that I've seen it. You just said there, and I've seen in some of your quotes you've said already since this fight has been made, that it's about a reminder, making a, a, a statement and reminding everyone that you are the man at 147. Why is that so important to you, do you think? Well, the inactivity. You know, I've been gone, I've been on a, you know, the tips of everyone's tongues and heavily spoken about. Talk is cheap. That's even when people are... Actions always speak louder than words. You know, and I've proven time and time again that I am what I say I am. You know, whether it goes 10 rounds, whether it goes 12 rounds, whether it goes two rounds, whether it goes four rounds, every department, I do what I say I'm going to do. Every department. You want to get out of box for 10 rounds? No problem. You want to get beat up for 10 rounds? No problem. You want to get beat up for 12 rounds? No problem. You want to get knocked out early? Come and try me. Come and try me, you get knocked out early. You know, so it's just that's, that's what this is. It's a reminder of I am what I say I am. And you'll see progress, you'll see development, even over the past 18 months or so, and you'll see how much I've learned and still grown and stayed in the gym and stayed disciplined where many would have fallen off. You know, because I'm not always motivated. You know, motivation, you know, it's hard to stay motivated when you get, get this come that way, this kind you know, trying to take me off course, manage to stay disciplined and work hard, and you'll see the progress, you'll see the development uh, come Feb 3rd. Just a quick one as well on, on the family side of Conor Ben. No, no, you're a big family man. You just said there off camera, this is your last Christmas as a family of three. Your, your wife, Victoria, expecting a baby girl this year. In what ways, Conor, has that helped you to mature as the man? And, and I guess following on from that, mature as a fighter too. Because you seem very mature sitting here talking to you now. Is it, what, 27 now? 27, yeah. 27 going 40. <laughs> I feel like the past 18 months saved me about 10 years. Um, do you know what? I have just... I've just changed a lot, man, this past 18 months. Like, I've just... Things that used to worry me before don't worry me now. Um, it's true when they say you go for adversity and it gives you nothing but resilience and strength. I can't say gives you because you have to go through something to build up resilience and strength. 
would I choose to have gone for it again? Probably not. Um, as it taught me a lot about who Conor Ben is as a man. It's tested me and my character, um, what I stand for, what I believe in, um, how I've handled it. I give myself a big pat on the back. I'm proud of me. You know, I'm proud of the way I handled this at you know, such a young age and, and still managed to deal with you know, being a dad, being a, being a husband, being a, a son, being a father, being a role model, being a, you know, it's a lot. So, you know, I give myself a pat on the back for coming to the gym where some days it was, I was dragging my feet and it was hard and breaking down in the gym, just going, I don't know if I can do this. So, you know, overcoming all of that, it, I'm proud of myself, man, you know, and um, I'm thankful for the, you know, Whatever God's plan is, is God's plan. You know, and, and just trust in the process. A lot of ups and downs, but having a, a little girl on the way has softened me a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> um, having a son, a blessing. You know, I'm just like really blessed with life. When you look at my life, outside of boxing, yeah, it's a blessing. I don't know, you're looking forward to fighting in America. But when it comes to when you have two kids and, and Vic's at home and you're not necessarily going to be wanting to go away for, for periods of time, do you believe we'll, we'll see you fight in the UK again in 2024? No doubt. You know, hopefully after this fight, April, May. Yeah, April, May is what we're aiming for. Um, and get back out in a, in a mega fight that the British public deserve. That's, that's all that matters, you know. After everyone who's rode with me, you know, and and gone through this storm with me, I've felt my emotions and you know, we all feel it together. So I'm so blessed with the support supporters I have and the love I get shown. You know, for me it's they des they deserve it. I want to give them the big fights. I want to give them the fights they want. I'm willing to go up to one sixty to give them the fight they want. So any world weight, not a concern to me. Any anyone, any top American fighter, any top like anyone, no problem. I interviewed Eddie in Arizona, and he was very keen on the thought of Devin Haney versus Conor Ben. What, what's your thoughts on the whole talks on that front and, and where that even came from? Um, it came from Bill Haney. Um, he mentioned it in an interview, said, yeah, he'd love the fight. Um, and then and I said, yeah, no problem, we can do that fight. Like, that's no problem, we'll do that fight next. And then Haney's come and fired back with his you know, nonsense talk of just nonsense he ain't even that he ain't even that way you know so him coming back saying oh yeah get off my dick and all that and like mate i didn't even mention your name you weren't even on my radar you know but you know you bill haney was respectful and um yeah, i like bill i like, I like Devin haney so i don't know why he's carrying on like that if he wants to come to england and come up to 147 no problem not a problem you think it's going to be an easy touch no problem come to 147 ain't ain't, ain't no problem to me you know, you want, to, you want to fight, let's fight then. You know, no concern to me. We can have it anywhere. We can have it over there, we can have it here, we can have it in a telephone box. I don't care where we have it. And another name I do want to ask you about, comments in the last 48 hours or so from Team Ennis that if a fight happens, you get stopped in that fight. That's what, what the team believe. That's a fight that you do want, isn't it? And you believe that's a foregone conclusion that one day you meet. I've been calling for Ennis. I've been calling for Ennis for time. And then the dad's come and said, yeah, he, he's not even known in Philly, man. Who the fuck wants to be known in Philly? Do you know what I mean? Like, why do I, why do I, like, you got a whole global market. You got a hot, why would I want to be known in Philly? You got everywhere else in the world, you know? So, him saying I'm not known and I'm a bigger name than Ennis. You know, probably over there and here. You know, is he a great fighter? Yeah, he's one hell of a fighter. Don't be claiming it, oh, I don't know who he is, and he does nothing for us, and he, he, um, he's not even top ten. I was calling you when I was top five. You know, so, it's just all that shit talk, weird. Because then he wants to fight somebody else who's a known name. People want to do the comparisons with me and who I fought and oh, why you fought. No amateur experience coming on. Don't, don't, I ain't gonna cry about it. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm still one hell of a fight, but no amateur experience. I'm fighting Van Heerden, who's he fought in his 28th, 29th fight. I fought him in my what, 19th? Samuel Vargas, fought him with Virgil Ortiz. Don't bear in mind, I've decapitated the pair of them better than Virgil Ortiz and Joe Ennis. 
So when you want to do the comparisons, that's your comparison, that's your measuring stick. So when you say you don't know who I am, I'm progressing hell of a lot quicker. Imagine me with 33 fights in and fighting Van Heerden. Or Al Jit. Do you know what I mean? So put some respect on it. I know you've got to get ready for sparring now. This is your last sparring in the UK before you fly to the States. Tomorrow, uh, the countdown well and truly on to Feb 3rd, Las Vegas, live on the zone. You said earlier, Connor, that when you say something, you mean it. Tell the world, tell me what happens in Feb 3rd. What do you see in your mind? How do you beat Pistol Pete Dobson? I said what I had to say. I'm going out there to, you know, make an example of him. You know, or talk is talk. So, like, let's leave the talking. He can do the talking, no problem. He, he's... Let him do the talking. I don't even know what he said. You just told me what he said. Talk as much as you want. Build the fight up as much as you want. But the outcome is still going to be the same. Irrelevant of whether you talk with confidence. Irrelevant of whether you, you know, you convince yourself into believing that you are this, what you say you are. Sometimes people can be delusional. Is one hell of a thing. Delusion is one hell of a thing. You know. So believe what you want to believe. You need confidence. But delusional confidence is a very fine line. And when I come in there, I know what I'm capable of, I know what I'm going to do, I know what I'm bringing. You know, and that's sheer violence, sheer aggression, sheer brutality, and sheer spite. You know, so that's what I'm bringing. And I know I'm going in there to do what I need to do. Irrelevant of what he does, forget what he does. I don't care what you do, because whatever you do, I do better. And I'm coming in there to, to, to make an example of him and handle business and deal with him in in serious fashion. Conor Ben, thanks for your time. Best of luck in the rest of the camp. Stay healthy, stay fresh, and I'll see you in Las Vegas.